Ladies and gentlemen, today's featured segment is presented to you by Radioactive Redhead. From book two of the Warlock series, author Mike Bennett brings to life tales from distant lands, detailing the undertakings of special operators as they pursue an Iranian-funded menace. Operators roam from Kurdistan to Pakistan, and no stone is left unturned in Turkey. Will justice be brought to close the ledger for the tragic 1983 Beirut bombing? Join us as we present to you, When Towers Fall. Chapter 2, Section 5 Mojo felt like such a noob. Sure, he had grounded out during BUDS in his follow-on training. He had done a successful deployment in the Persian Gulf and even had boarded several Iranian dows to search for illicit material. He had spent four months in Afghanistan in the mountains and north of Khost, hunting Taliban, and had survived three wicked firefights. But this environment was crazy. He was getting a crash course in unconventional warfare, an advanced trade craft with a group of four Americans surrounded by tens of thousands of Ansar terrorists in the middle of northern Iraq. His crash course was not on the controlled Robin stage training exercise that the U.S. Army Special Forces went through. His was live on the edge, living rough every moment with brave Kurdish fighters who desperately wanted Saddam gone. His language skills were improving exponentially, with his immersion and daily application as Charlie's Terp. He also absorbed the nuances of negotiation the deputy team leader employed when continually being undermined by Washington in negotiating the plans and the team set forth to Jalal Talibani. The support the Americans were supposed to bring, air support, Precision-guided munitions, artillery, heavy machine guns, kept getting delayed or denied, as Turkey was unshakable in its insistence that no such armaments would cross over their sovereign border. Mojo learned a great deal more about strategic reconnaissance, as the team always accompanied a PUK detachment, going out on patrol whenever the PUK is offered. They would snoop and poop, and scope where all the Ansar heavy gun or AA positions were, captured their disposition digitally and transmitted as bits of data to feed up the invasion planners. These photos were pure gold. They saw things on the ground that satellites could not possibly discern as a threat. Their IIRs would save lives. Blaze and Drone would go out with PUK security to either go hunt for new resources or handle incoming intel reporting from already recruited sources. In four months, Charlie only released Mojo to go on forays six different times. He observed the security procedures tailored for each meet, kept his mouth shut and just watched. He saw live, in the field, the tradecraft taught at all the farm for the new career trainees. Chapter 2 Section 6. Time was passing, and Washington was finally augmenting the small CIA team. Elements from the 10th Special Forces Group called the pilot team augmented by the CIA team in Kuala Shalan. This pilot team was headed by a captain who was accompanied by four NCOs. This Special Forces contingent would do a great deal of scouting across the Kurdish sector of northern Iraq, and they would report a great deal of data of military value. This special forces contingent would do a great deal of scouting across the Kurdish sector of northern Iraq, and they would port a great deal of data of military value. How many tons of a given bridge over a river could withstand, the general layout and capacity of an abandoned airfield in Harir, the level of sophistication of combined arms training of the Kurd militias had attained. None of this made up for the deficiencies regarding promises made and promises kept. The Americans had promised javelin missiles to negate Iraqi tanks. Mojo watched Charlie suffer through meetings, trying to explain why that promise had not been delivered. With the few resources they had, the team had built rapport with the Peshmergas by providing small unit maneuver and marksmanship training. From Insrilik to Suleimania, Mojo had undertaken a unique journey in this Iraqi campaign in the global war on terror. Over that course of time, he had made lifelong friends— but it was time to return home and rejoin his SEAL brothers and family. Soon enough, he would return to Iraq. If this preview broadcast has piqued your curiosity, the book in its entirety will be available for purchase from Amazon.com. Simply search, When Towers Fall, 
by Mike Bennett, and peruse a catalog of its latest works. Be sure to tune in to Radioactive Redhead to hear further excerpts from the Warlock series. This concludes today's featured segment from Radioactive Redhead. May your days be filled with good memories and laughter, and God bless.